David Dobrik has many copycats, but only one has found ultimate success. His name is Alex Warren, and he's been accused of not only copying Dobrik's videos, but his looks, his mannerisms, and oh yes, <laughs> the laugh. <laughs> Despite Warren being called out by the comments, big internet personalities, and even by Dobrik's friends, I unfollowed David Dobrik on Instagram. Her ex-friends, the kid has managed to outmaneuver the criticism and ride the wave of internet fame. But the bigger question is, why? Why would someone choose to go down in infamy as the biggest David Dobrik knockoff? Despite the fame and money, it doesn't seem worth it when it's a known path to inevitable irrelevancy. The worst thing is when people try to copy or replicate a YouTuber. Mm. It's not going to work. Yeah. Is Warren just a shape-shifting sociopath? Or is there something else going on? Hey guys, it's Donna. A very long while ago, I did a video about Alex Warren and copying. Now, as you can see from the comments, I didn't go too hard on him because he was a younger and smaller creator back then. But now that he's 22 and famous, we can bully him. Just kidding, don't do that, don't bully. No, the real reason I wanted to do a follow-up on this topic is that now that the David Dobrik era is kind of over, we can now fully examine what happens to a YouTube clone full term. And their motivations to copying, if they know across the board, it's looked down upon. Today, we're gonna to be talking about Alex Warren. Alex Warren is a TikToker in the hype house. He's known primarily for being a David Dobrik copycat, and I'm not lying when I say that. That's actually what people know him for. Warren's plagiarism controversy came out years ago. Video after video blatantly called him out for copying one of YouTube's biggest internet personalities, David Dobrik. In general, the audience was in agreement that Warren was indeed guilty of this crime. This was such a major difference to past accused copycats. It felt unanimous that Alex Warren was plagiarizing Dobrik. It's easy to see why. So this video on TikTok and we're gonna recreate it. Ah! Three, two, green damage. Ah! Ah! Bro. They're almost exactly the same. All of Alex Warren's videos are identical to the thumbnails of David Dobrik's videos. Both creators center their videos around the shenanigans of their friends which isn't an entirely new concept. However, Warren has several video titles that cross over with his YouTube counterpart. His format for his early videos are also eerily similar to his, hitting the same beats. We're gonna see his <laughs> Daddy, I need you. Daddy, Daddy. <laughs> Okay, team. Go, go, go. I got other, other. I believe I have kids and I'm doing that. <laughs> Ryan, three, two, one. If you were to describe your one word, it'd be inverted. He said yes. I, I, I want to point this out that I just met him an hour ago. So after this, after this we're best friends. Three, two, one. Yo. <laughs> Both videos are jam-packed with funny bits, pranks, stunts, and zany science experiments. You could compare them to removing all the slow portions from a season of reality TV and creating a massive highlight reel. Warren also seemed to mirror David's mannerisms. Hey guys, this is kind of a stupid and random idea, but I've always wanted to do this. So I have a hunch that Snapchat is throwing me a surprise birthday party. So to make sure, I have to confirm with Jason. Okay guys, so I've been wanting to do this for a really long time. Me and Patty go way back. He was one of the first people in my vlogs. I want to do something nice because I always make fun of him for having a really shitty phone. He mm. copied his voice. Mm. I don't understand. Yeah, that part, that part's scary. It's freaking me out. And the nail in the coffin, the copying even went down to using the same shampoo. Literally, all I need is a toothbrush, toothpaste, shampoo, and I use Suave Kids. <laughs> oh, yeah. What? This is my next essential. This is my Suave Kids shampoo. Now, this is a very particular one. Now, I'm in agreement with the audience here. Warren's case certainly looks like plagiarism, but something about this blatant theft never sat right with me. Bombshell after bombshell video came after Warren with overwhelming evidence of his apparent imitation, Yet, he seemed to be ignorant of his actions, or perhaps was in denial. You sound, mm -hmm. and your laugh is similar, if not identical, to David, yeah. to David Dober. I don't, I don't hear it that much. <laughs> this response to community consensus is bizarre. Normally, creators who receive call-outs such as this apologize, even if they don't actually mean it. Hell, even A4's response to the YouTube community calling him a Mr. Beast copycat was more normal than this. 
Picture? Pfft, it's nothing. Better to watch the quality of my content than the American. I do it 10,000 times better. Pics takes 10 minutes. Film 4 to 10 hours without editing and planning. Aggressive, yes, but the response makes sense. Warren's response is more like, What? I don't know what you're talking about. What do you say when people like genuinely compare you to him? Like, what's your response to them? Like, I don't know how to react. Because I never know if they're actually like f***ing with me and trying to be like a dick. It's like a lot of people do not like me. Or if they're just actually like, hey, your videos are good. They're like, Dave. Really? Even after all the compilation videos? All right, let's give Alex the benefit of the doubt here, because to be fair, I asked you guys on Instagram the difference between inspiration and plagiarism, and, uh, well, here are your answers. Side note, if you want to be part of the videos, you gotta follow me on Instagram. You have to do something transformative to make a piece of work different from the inspiration. Okay, so technically, with that definition, Warren's videos wouldn't be considered copying because his format and personality are similar to Dobrik's, but his bits and the jokes that he says are different. Still, as you saw, the audience felt it was full-blown plagiarism. If it's not transformative and the new work simply replaces the old work, then it's a copy. Okay, so this answer seems a little more closer to truth, I guess. Both Warren and Dobrik's videos could replace each other and maybe no one would even notice. But there are songs that I feel like can't replace each other, like Paramore's Misery Business and Olivia Rodrigo's Good For You, yet a court has decided in favor of having Rodrigo pay royalties to Hayley Williams as well as Taylor Swift after being accused of copying their songs. And I know music is a little bit different from the usual YouTube stuff, but as you can see, there still is no solid definition if you compare those two cases. Okay, I did not plant this, but someone said, Abbott Elementary, inspiration. Alex Warren, copy. These are great answers, but as you can see, there doesn't seem to be any definite rules into what copying is. How much of a work has to be transformative in order for it to be considered original? If people have varying ideas of originality, I can see how one can do something thinking it's inspiration, while others call it straight theft. What if Warren is one of those people who think it's only copying if you imitate it shot for shot? Additionally, Dobrik's friends don't seem to sense any bad intentions coming from him, as they've been willing to have him guest on their shows. Alex has even met Dobrik, although they don't seem to interact much from this clip. Maybe David thought it was his own reflection. I mean, you don't see Jimmy Beast meeting up with his clone A4. No, I actually think the motivation for Warren's mimicry stems from the natural path one has to take to become an artist. Pause, let me say this real quick. So artists in the traditional world always hate when I call YouTubers artists, but creating YouTube videos does involve the expression or application of human creative skill and imagination. So by definition, it is art in some form. Are we all Picasso, though? No. Hell no. Okay, continue. In his book, Steal Like an Artist, Austin Cleone describes the journey into creativity. He explains the origin of ideas. Every new idea is just a remix or a mashup of one or two previous ideas. And that when people say be original, it's pretty much bullshit because nothing is actually original. The reason something may feel this way is that you don't know the reference or original sources the work is derived from. All creative work builds on what came before. Nothing is completely original. He argues that no one is born with a style or voice. We don't come out of the womb knowing who we are. In the beginning, we learn by pretending to be our heroes. We learn by copying. I even took a cinematography class and they made us copy. We copied the lighting from a scene of a movie of our choice. I chose to copy Insidious. Cleon goes on to say that it is the artist's job to be a collector and that you're only going to be as good as the stuff you surround yourself with. If this is the case, copying is natural and just the first step for anyone's creative journey. Think of the kid first learning how to write the alphabet. He'll copy it as best as he can, and eventually he'll develop his own handwriting style. From Beethoven to Picasso to Steven Spielberg, this is step one of every artist's journey. 
copying, stealing like an artist. So you're saying Alex Warren wasn't copying because this is a natural process? No, just because this is a natural process doesn't mean that I don't think Alex Warren wasn't copying. It sounds like that's what you're saying. To be clear, he was copying. Alex Warren was copying David Dobrik. But hear me out, he wasn't supposed to gain traction because of this. You see, in the traditional art world, whether that be painting, sculpting, film, photography, it's very rare for you to be known for the very first thing you did, your step one. And it's usually because that first piece sucks. They're crap. 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 Mega crap. You're at a stage where you're still copying your heroes. Even the Beatles started as a cover band, emulating musicians like Buddy Holly and Elvis. While it's pretty much a given that everyone has to go through this stage on their path to creativity, it can still be frustrating for the beginner to have all their work discounted at the stage. After all, art is one of those things where you put your soul into it. No one likes being told that this thing they just poured their heart into is awful. But this process is actually a good thing. The repeated rejection and occasional win allow the artist to learn what works and what doesn't work. With continued experimentation, they also learn what they like and what they don't like. Their personal style will eventually be developed from this continued trial and error. You enter your knockoff Martin Scorsese movie in a film festival, for example, and no judge is going to accept it. There already is a Martin Scorsese. And there's only a dozen or so different paths to find success in the traditional world. For film, that's getting noticed, attaining a contact from someone with connections, or getting into top film festivals. This stage inadvertently catches blatant copycats, and they will be cut off at many of these stages. In a way, this whole process helps you become a better artist. Pause again. For the purposes of this video, I'm not talking about Hollywood celebrities. A lot of the time, their process is designed for profit. Uh, the two can cross over, but it's an entirely different game. Okay, let's continue. In an attempt to develop his own style, Alex Warren copied one of his heroes who happened to be David Dobrik. This was his step one. He was practicing like all of us. And one clue for why I've come to that is his age. I've been trying to do YouTube since I was 11. You definitely don't have your own voice then. Even personality-wise, teenagers tend to mimic their peers. And it scares me so much. His mannerisms, the style of the cuts, and his ideas, it's, it's weird, bruh. Instead of this content being rejected like it might have in traditional art, it found an audience that didn't mind. His step one started to gain traction. All right, guys, that's for this video. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and like and comment. Don't forget to subscribe. Merch will be linked down below as well as my second channel as well as my Instagram. Go ahead and go down below. I forgot the safety. Yeah. It might have been viewers who felt like David didn't upload as much, so Warren was a good supplement. Or, given his age, the viewers had no idea who Dobrik even was. They were just responding to a really good, already established format. After all, Warren did accumulate most of his viewership from TikTok. This makes it tempting to assume that Warren's success was a fluke. Surely, no artist can escape the torments of that beginning stage. But you're looking at social media wrong. You see, the algorithm isn't designed to make you a better artist. Many misconstrue this facet because of the objective measures of views and subscriber count. Oh, I'm good because this many people watch my stuff. Oh, I'm good because this many people follow my stuff. No. The algorithm's function is to simply distribute uploaded content to viewers with the intention to keep them on the platform as long as possible. <sighs> Let's uh, simplify this a little bit. Let's say you want to be an actor. Typically, this is done by going to audition after audition after audition. You get rejected, you practice, then audition again. You get rejected again, then you take some acting classes. This system builds a better artist. On social media, you upload a video. The algorithm will take that video and show viewers it thinks will watch it. It's your first time, so you get like five views. All from yourself. You find out that you can get more views by hopping on a trend, 50,000 views. You also find out this happens when you clickbait, 100,000 views. The system builds a creator that knows how to produce content viewers want to see. Now, the two can cross over. Eventually, the YouTube creator will produce so many videos, some of their skills such as editing, cinematography, and storytelling will increase. But ultimately, that's secondary. 
the algorithm doesn't really care about that stuff. Its primary concern is to keep viewers on their platform by showing them content they want to see. It will promote creators that can produce that. Horse kicks tree, farts on dog, then runs away, has 37 million views, for instance. But I say it does lack some skill and artistic quality. Well, the horse was very skillful, but you get what I mean. So Warren's success wasn't a fluke, but it was functioning on success as defined by the social media algorithm, producing alluring content viewers want to see. For Alex, this was content made during his step one, the step where we all copy our heroes. I think this is why you see that bewildered response from Warren. One sector of the internet was trashing his blatant copy. However, the other rewarded him for it. Even when confronted by big influencers, this confrontation was pretty lax. I know we laugh talk, like, so like we talk like this when we're filming. I sometimes like talk different ways, but like when I talk like that in front of my friends and stuff, they, their mood is lifted. It's like you kind of come in with like an atmosphere of like, hey guys, look, what's, what are we doing? <laughs> I love it. I'm so happy now. It's probably due to his age. Nothing about these videos were career ruining. Not that it had to be, but it certainly shouldn't have had the opposite effect. Everything in the system incentivizes producing content that the algorithm will distribute. And that can cross over with a creative's step one, that copying stage. And this can be frustrating if you've worked so hard on your format just for someone to take it and garner an audience from it. I think this is why you see people ripping off others more on social media. One such event that comes to mind was done by the channel formerly known as Jack Scap who copied Van Nystad, attaining over 1 million views. Step two, remove outer plates. Step three, remove bolts. He did give him some credit, but this would be like me uploading a Sunny V2 styled video and then slapping a inspired by at the end. And here's how I made Tom's hack knife. Just last week, the editing podcast's intro was ripped off shot for shot. The lack of consequence and low barrier to entry bolster this for sure. But in my opinion, the copying is more rampant because it can be rewarded by the algorithm. And if it is rewarded, that creator will continue to upload content like it. Take it from the biggest scumbag ripoff artist ever. This creator should be canceled for doing this. Me. It's me. My first videos were pretty much a rip-off of ASAP Sciences, and I know they didn't invent whiteboard videos, but that's where I got my inspiration from. I pretty much was doing the psychology version of what they did, and boom, I was rewarded for it. Those are pretty good views for someone's first videos, if I do say so myself. So, when presented with the hard truth, Warren became defensive. Even though the rip-off comments became so frequent, the high incentive seemed as if it emboldened him to make fun of the criticism. People will never stop calling me a David Dobrik wannabe. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> and taking into account his background, everything told him that what he was doing was right. If you mimic the surface of somebody's work without understanding where they are coming from, your work will never be anything more than a knockoff. At some point, you'll have to move from imitating your heroes to emulating them. Imitation is about copying. Emulation is when imitation goes one step further, breaking through into your own thing. This next step after imitation, I can see, may have been difficult for Warren to do because he was being rewarded for continued imitation. Had an unconventional rise to fame, 21-year-old Hype House co-finder Alex Warren went from being homeless and sleeping in his car to finding a massive following online and now stars in a Netflix, Netflix reality show with more than 20 million followers across all platforms. There was no motivation to change and adapt. There was no reason to develop his own style. And why would you if you were being validated with followers and capital? Along with the fame and money, Warren found himself as the co-founders of one of the biggest content houses in Los Angeles, the Hype House, even if he is only on record for naming the house. A couple of years ago, they had a Netflix special. He's even been on TV for interviews. And he has been able to develop connections with other big influencers. 
Turns out our friend Bryant actually knew David Dobrik, and David was coming to see Bryant. So this was Pepper's reaction when he saw David Dobrik. Even with all the infamy of being a knockoff, who in their right mind would turn their back on all these opportunities? But the copying stage can't last forever. I think inevitably, people want to move out of that copying phase to express themselves in a way that is them. There isn't a move that's a new move. The basketball star Kobe Bryant admitted that all of his moves on the court were stolen from watching tapes of his heroes. But initially, when Bryant stole a lot of those moves, he realized he couldn't completely pull them off because he didn't have the same body type as the guys he was thieving from. He had to adapt the moves to make them his own. For me even, if I stuck to that ASAP science route, I probably would be a bigger creator by now. But it just didn't feel like me, so I did something else. I did a lot of things, actually. Okay, so I know that was a little abstract, so let's continue examining Warren's journey to see what I mean. In an interesting twist of events, his current content has become so unlike Dobrik's. In the past year, Warren's focus has been on music, which I can't picture Dobrik doing, in this style at least. His songs often illustrate his childhood, his relationship with his parents, and mental health struggles. We do still see some of those David mannerisms still present, but this is not the type of music you'd expect from a comedy vlogger. I was expecting something a little more Jake Paul-esque. I know the cynic in everyone is thinking that Warren's change in direction is probably due to the fact that Dobrik hasn't uploaded in a while, therefore he's got nothing to copy. To me, the change is too drastic for that to be the reason for his shift. He's not even doing something comedy vlogger adjacent, like producing content that continues to appeal to kids, something Brent Rivera might do, or any of the other Mr. Beast clones. If he wants to be more edgy, take the Logan Paul route. But music about trauma? Leon argues that the purpose of copying is not to master the surface level aesthetic so that you look like your hero. The purpose of copying is to see like your hero. And there is no doubt that this process has helped Warren see like Dobrik. This means being able to produce an idea that breaks the internet and creating an entertaining viewing experience with an ensemble of friends. From that, Warren should be able to see that Dobrik's creative goals seem to come from the perspective of making extreme content the audience can't help but click on. He just wants to entertain. Once you've learned to see like them, it's time to take this and create something that comes from you. I recently just signed a record label deal uh, with Atlantic Records. I always wanted to do it. If you scroll down far enough on my social media, everything is just singing. The vlogs at a certain point when I moved out and you know started really focusing on music it just really made me unhappy. I felt like they weren't true to me or like, you know, when I was in front of the camera, I hated it because I wanted to do music. This 180 degree flip suggests that like Kobe, Warren has learned the perspective of his hero and is inclined to use that to carve his own path the natural step of everyone's creative journey. Recent interviews also appear to add to the sentiment as well. And this time, instead of being defensive, Warren is receptive to the criticism. David was like the only person in my eyes at that time who was making videos similar to what my dad was doing. And he knew he was dying, so he left us a bunch of videos of like us as children and like he would scare my mom and put on a mask and he would film it all POV. It was something cool where I'd watch them back and fell in love with it and you know, David's were doing really well. So I watched a bunch of them, a bunch of them studied how to edit like David, studied how to do a bunch of stuff because there was no one else. And then over time, you know, in the comparisons and everything, people were just like, oh, like, you know, David would want to be, and I was like, I genuinely never saw it. Like from that time on, and then, you know, ever since I quit, I look back and I'm like, you know what? I can totally understand that. <laughs> but that's something where it's like, you know, in the moment, like this is me, because it was, I grew up with that content and you know, you kind of take after the things you're inspired by. As YouTube expands, I think we're going to see more and more individuals make it big from their copying phase. Not because their motivations are sinister necessarily, but because the algorithm does what it does best give you what you want, even if it's original, is from someone else. This is the unfortunate reality in the world of social media and art. However, as bleak as that may seem, perhaps this is the very thing that pushes creators to become better artists, rather than producing content solely on the facet the algorithm will distribute it. You can copy the mechanics, you can copy a style, you can copy an aesthetic, 
but rip-off artists can never emulate the heart, the heart behind telling a great story, the soul behind something that actually moves or affects people in an emotional way. Copycats, rip-off artists, keep original people on their toes. Because what it means is if you want to stay original, you need to stay way, way ahead of the curve. You've got to stay so far out there that the rip-off artists are just chasing you down and they will never actually catch up. Only the best will survive the pressure of outpacing the copycats with continuous innovation. Ultimately, while copying may be a shortcut to success, it is the originality and creativity of an artist's work that will truly stand the test of time and leave a lasting impact on their audience. All right, I do want to close out the video by defending my small slash mid-tiered YouTube creators because there are times when an influencer gets famous, all the viewers start saying, hey, you're copying, insert popular YouTuber's name here, even though that you're not. Like, any time that I would go outside back in the Casey Neistat days, any time I'd go outside, I'd always get comments like, stop copying Casey Neistat, which I just got bullied for filming in front of my door. Some of us have to film outside. And then that era died down and it became the Shane Dawson docu-series era. And then all the comments were, oh, you're copying Shane Dawson. To this day, I still don't see that because I've never went to any canceled YouTuber's house and tried to do a redemption arc. Luckily right now we're in the Mr. Beast era. So his and my videos never cross over. So I've never gotten any, you're copying Mr. Beast comments. Anyway, that's the end of the video. I will see you guys next time. Stay psyched.